Welcome to weekly UAS news update. We have three stories for you this week. Yet again, we're going to talk about the Drone for First Responder Act because this is just a horrible idea. Uh, second, we're going to talk about a drone pilot in North Carolina. Uh, well, that gets some bad news. This is also uh, can have some repercussion. And then lastly, a DJI Air 4 rumors potentially. So let's get to that. All right, first up this week is a follow-up on the misleadingly named the Drone for First Responder Act from uh, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik from New York. Uh, as we mentioned last news update, and I think even the one before, uh, this bill was actually introduced last week and it would increase the taxes on drones that are imported from China by 5% each year up to 50% plus $100. And that's actually important. This means that this bill is basically trying to price out recreational pilots out of the hobby. And, and here's why. Stick with me for a bit because uh, this is just concerning. Let's say you have a cheap toy drone today that costs $130. In four years, it will cost 50% more plus $100. So 130 times 1.5 plus $100. It means that you will pay $300 for the drone that you pay today, 130. Uh, the alternative, well, in four years, they want to push you to a U.S. drone, a U.S. drone that doesn't exist at the moment from a company that we don't know about because no American manufacturers are currently building this kind of drone that we just talked about. Uh, a Mavic 3 Pro that costs $2,200 today, that's the basic uh, model, would cost $3,400 in four years. And of course, until a year later where you would not even be able to buy it because it would be banned from import. In five years, this bill would ban drones that contain a flight controller, a radio Video data transmission device, a camera, a gimbal, software, network connectivity hardware, or data storage that is manufactured in China. So this would obviously ban DJI, which is the target here, and Autel, but also Exodrone, Holy Stone, Ruko, Emacs, Beta FPV, and pretty much any pre-made drone that you can think of on the market. Again, without any replacement because nobody's interested in getting, in getting into that market. So what about FPV pilots that I mentioned before? Well, drones that utilize systems that are manufactured in China, such as Team Black Sheep, Team Motors, iFlight, even Spectrum would also be banned. So think about this. If you're an FPV builder, if you use any of this, then you are, well, not going to be able to do it. Uh, it gets better. And of course, I'm being sarcastic. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? The funds from all of these new tariffs would be used to fund first responders purchasing new drones, which on paper might sound like a great idea. The details, 60% of the funds that would be collected would go to first responders, 20% would go to farmers, and 20% to those that work with critical infrastructures. But in five years, guess what? All the funds would end. Meaning that if you're a first responder, a farmer, or you work with critical infrastructure, uh, you're gonna be left on your own to buy drones that have been overinflated because of all of this and without any grants to buy them. Is your public safety department able to do this in five years without any help from the government? Now, this would obviously decimate the entire hobby. Uh, many actually thought that the FAA was interested in killing the hobby. I never thought that they were. I don't think they were. Uh, but now it actually certainly looks like Stefanik's office, uh, along with the supporters of this bill, including AUVSI, are definitely on a path to do just that. Uh, we've included links to the DAA. It's time for you to please, please, please reach out to your representative and let them know that this is not okay. This is something that will hurt you. All the people that are watching this news update here every single week, all 10 or 20,000 of you that uh, go and watch and leave comments, and then all the other ones as well that don't leave comments, this is going to affect you. I want to give you a quick update on something that happened since we recorded the segment that you just heard. Uh, as of this Thursday morning, I have received a great confirmation that the efforts from the Drone Advocacy Alliance have been actually working tremendously well. Uh, not only because we have seen victories this year in preventing a bunch of states from passing the uh, market restrictions on drones. That was 13 states, Alabama, Arizona, California, Connecticut, Iowa, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Missouri, um, Oklahoma, Virginia, Washington, and West Virginia. But also because only a few hours after we recorded the segment you just watched, Republican Congresswoman Stefanik and Republican Congressman John Molinar, Molinar uh, have decided to request from the Attorney General of the United States to investigate the Drone Advocacy Alliance and determine whether or not the DAA should register under the Foreign Agent Registration Act, or what's called FAIR. 
Uh, she and her colleague claim that the DAA is an agent of DJI, uh, which is laughable. But DAA is a drone agnostic grassroots advocacy coalition made up of businesses who do not believe in drone market restrictions. It's actually incorporated in Delaware and DJI is not a member of the board. Now, board members are all American citizens. They all have uh, a stake in this industry because they all own UAS companies that are operated in the United States. And the DAA also has a very long list of alliance partners, including Pilot Institute. Now, to be clear, DAA has never been involved in lobbying, contrary to what Stefanik is claiming. Now, really, what this truly means, and that's why I have a smile on my face, is that DA's grassroots efforts have been slowing down Stefanik in her attempt to pass restrictive laws, such as the one that I just discussed a few minutes ago. Now, this is a great sign that we need to actually continue what we're doing and even double down on the efforts to make sure that we let the elected officials know that, well, they will not get away with destroying this industry. So please, 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 even more than before, take a minute today to go to the DA website in order to find your representative and also let them know that you do not agree with this proposed regulation. Thank you. Let's get to the next story. All right, next up, an appeal courts in uh, North Carolina says that the North Carolina Surveyors Board didn't violate a drone pilot's right by telling them to stop advertising and offering aerial mapping services. Now, if you haven't heard about this story, we talked about it a while back on this news update. Actually, it may have been like two years ago. It's been a while. Uh, but a drone pilot in North Carolina received a cease and desist letter from the state's surveying board for engaging in what they called mapping, surveying, and photogrammetry, uh, stating accuracy, providing location and dimensional data, and producing orthomosaic maps, quantities, and topographic information. They weren't happy, the board wasn't happy that this person was doing this without being a surveyor. Uh, the current court decision effectively is now banning mapping in North Carolina for those that are not surveyors. Now, this person's name is Michael Jones. He, his company is 360 Virtual Drone Services, and he plans at this stage to further appeal the decision. I hope he's successful. I think this is not a clear-cut situation here and a bit of an overreach, but Obviously, we'll have to let a court uh, decide on this. Let us know in the comments what you think about this. Uh, I think uh, this is going to be another little while before we talk about it again. All right, finally, we may have some rumors of an Air 4 drone from DJI. Uh, there are some leaked images that show a possible Air 4 battery and rumors that it might include some specs like a one inch sensor, which is, I think, a possibility, a mechanical shutter. I can almost guarantee you that's not going to happen, a variable aperture two cameras, and then the OcuSync 4 system. Interestingly, the leaks make it seem like uh, the drone might be used for mapping, which would likely cater to entry-level drone pilots that are looking to get their feet wet uh, without spending the $3,500 on the Mavic 3 Enterprise. I'm still very reserved on that. Again, remember, these are just rumors, but I highly doubt that uh, DJI is going to cannibalize the uh, Mavic 3 Enterprise market. Uh, they did this for a very specific reason. Uh, there is a reason they don't have the uh, SDK for any of the non-enterprise drone. So I think this is vapor at this stage. I don't think this is going to happen, but we'll keep you updated if we hear more. And that's it. That's all we have. Remember, no live on Monday. Uh, it's going to be a holiday, and we will see you next Friday for more news. And hopefully uh, a lot of you go and take action. Please, please, please go to the DAA website and uh, send something to your lawmakers. Peace. Oh, check the like out.